Josephine is a kind-hearted girl, lives a peaceful and quiet life with her family. She loves reading in her spare time. Throughout her life, she never experiences any major ups and downs. The most significant part about her is her striking beauty has captured many men's attention. However, little does she know that her beauty will result in her life being brought into hell by a deaf-mute vagrant named Timothy shortly after becoming his target. One day, Timothy is strolling through the village of Giles as usual. He suddenly encounters Josephine passing him on her way to attend church. Josephine's striking beauty leaves him in awe, prompting him to enter the church and quietly observe her from a distance. Once the service is over, Timothy discreetly follows Josephine to her home and climbs up a tree to watch her. A few days pass, and Timothy grows entirely captivated by Josephine, and he begins following her and stalking her wherever she goes. Some nights, Timothy hides in the bushes and watches Josephine stand on her windowsill, gazing out at the forest. As his obsession grows higher, he follows her to the river, observing Josephine undress and bathe. What a pervert! However, Josephine doesn't notice anything strange surrounding her but drowns in her own sadness at her mother's passing. Her mother's passing turns her into a daze all day long. One night while Josephine sleeps, the pervert vagrant enters her room, delicately places a butterfly on her forehead, and briefly explores the house. After observing the surroundings, Timothy decides to take his actions a step further and more formally. On the following day, he arrives at the house, where Josephine's father, Dr. Philippe, warmly welcomes him. Despite Timothy being deaf and mute, the old man tries to communicate with him through lip reading. The kind-hearted doctor brings Timothy inside and orders the housemaid, Madeline, to prepare a place for the guest. Timothy is now inside the house officially and can't wait any longer to learn more about Josephine and her world. In front of the bookshelf, Timothy attempts to convey his thoughts to the doctor, who looks at him in confusion. Right after, he grabs a pen and paper, prompting Philippe to understand his ability which amazes the old man. During dinner, Josephine sits across from Timothy, but she eyes the strange man suspiciously. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. It's Paul, who has admired Josephine for a long time, but also always gets turned down by her. Sensing something weird enough in the air, Josephine begins feeling detached again. She keeps gazing at the vagrant with a touch of unease as he traces the rim of his cup with his finger. Suddenly, Philip hands Timothy the pencil as he is amazed by the vagrant's reading and writing ability. Soon, Timothy writes that he can predict the future. He proceeds to write the words force and disease, causing the doctor to ponder over the latter. Next, Timothy writes the words woman and birth, capturing Josephine's attention as she becomes enthralled by his restless fingers. To make things more real and believable, the vagrant performs a magic trick where he transforms a knife into a ring. He then places the knife in the center of the table, and mysteriously, it points toward the distressed Josephine. Everyone is stunned. Leading Timothy claims himself to be the son of God. Josephine grows more frightened upon seeing this bizarre vagrant but doesn't reveal her feelings. The following day, she appears ill and is advised to stay in her room by Philippe. The girl listens to her father, but when she retreats to her room and gazes back at Timothy outside her window, as Timothy approaches, Josephine hastily closes her windows, hoping to prevent him from entering. However, Timothy manages to meet her in the kitchen, where he slides a ring onto her finger. Nervously, Josephine fidgets with a knife on the table, and Timothy questions if she is scared, revealing that he is not actually deaf-mute. When Josephine turns around for the cooking food, Timothy runs his hand across her back, causing Josephine to straighten up immediately, as if he has some power over her. The young woman serves them food, and Timothy sprinkles something invisible on her plate. In a trance-like state, Josephine stands absentmindedly and experiences a childhood memory. Disturbingly, Josephine starts undressing, which prompts Timothy to violate her as she struggles under his touch. In an attempt to defend herself, Josephine grabs the knife, but Timothy guides her hand, and they both end up wounded, causing her to lose consciousness. After a short while, Josephine wakes up, feeling miserable and violated, while Timothy mocks her, overwhelmed by the situation. She lashes out at Timothy, who responds by roaring at her like a wild man before being forcefully pushed out. Later, Josephine, feeling the need to cleanse herself, takes a bath and removes the ring Timothy left to erase any traces of him. As she looks at the chaotic scene in the kitchen, she decides to leave the house and follow her assailant, who is headed toward the woods. Josephine catches up to Timothy and pleads with him to set her free, but he dismissively tells her to return home. Despite his immoral actions, 
the peculiar woman continues to follow Timothy until they reach a neighboring house, where Joseph, the head of the family, welcomes them. Drenched from the rain, Joseph's wife, Marie, offers a towel to the shivering Josephine, who behaves strangely. While Timothy finds amusement in her discomfort, the peculiar man repeats his magic trick during dinner, amusing Joseph while Josephine remains emotionally unhinged. The others at the table watch the young woman with concern as she proclaims that she is not a harlot. Afterward, Doris and her mother prepare to leave, but Josephine suddenly snaps out of her trance and pleads for their help. Timothy slams the table and slides his hand across her back, asserting control over her once again. He then moves his hand, compelling Josephine to smile against her will. Timothy manipulates her movements like a puppet on strings, causing her to drop to her knees and crawl around the room. Obedient to the strange man's commands, Marie finds it disturbed and soon implores him to stop, but he threatens to harm her daughter as well, prompting them to leave the house swiftly. Shortly after, Timothy seeks assistance from a man called Cyprien, and together they drag Josephine to an upstairs bedroom. He then orders Cyprien to undress the lifeless-looking woman and rub her feet, finding it ridiculous. Cyprien does it as instructed. Much later, the whole family rushes to the room but finds Timothy taking advantage of Josephine. In anger, the men throw the intruder out into the rain. However, even though Josephine is out of danger temporarily, she starts clenching her mouth and fists in pain. Joseph tries to stop her suffering by splashing a pail of water on her, but it proves ineffective. Eventually, they allow Timothy to return, and he traces a cross on Josephine's temple, relieving her. Afterward, he condemns the family as they leave the house. Soon, the two continue their journey through the woods and set up camp. Josephine sits by the fire, her gaze lost in thought. Timothy catches a rabbit for dinner, but Josephine finds it cruel as she never experiences it before. So she walks straight up to the forest. After Timothy fully enjoys his feast, he summons the poor girl to his front. And once again, he hypnotizes her and violates her motionless body. What a poor girl. The following day Josephine wakes up and is left with no choice. She has to consume the rabbit leftovers from the previous night. She then cleans herself in a stream, fully aware that Timothy has been watching her shamelessly. As the two embark on their journey again, Timothy ignores her require of taking a rest. And when the night comes, the man forces her to do the loathness again. In the heated moment, Josephine finally learns Timothy's name. However, the man claims that she went with him willingly and he was there to rescue her due to her miserable and helpless life. But Josephine insists that he took her and calls him a monster and chimp, which leads Timothy leashes out his anger and lustful desire on her. Josephine rests her night with despair, until the early morning. She rushes out of the forest and hopes to find some rescues. Fortunately, she encounters a man and briefly considers asking for help, but the latter believes nothing about her situation and simply walks away. The false hope makes Josephine realize that she will never be out of Timothy's control if she doesn't come up with an orchestrated plan. Again, in despair, she resigns herself to her fate, bound to Timothy. Night after night, Timothy violates Josephine to satisfy his need. However, the girl stops resisting no more, secretly waiting for the day to arrive and revenge. As they continue their aimless journey, a pair of brigands attack Timothy, who fights back and cuts his hand, defeated. The thieves flee, leaving their bags behind. Timothy cleans his hand in a nearby stream, and when Josephine notices his scars, she asks if he has killed anyone. Timothy affirms it, fascinating her. When the night comes, they arrive at a wedding feast in a clearing. Josephine drinks her first wine and invites Timothy to join the dance. She then kisses Timothy, having developed feelings for him. To this point, Timothy still doesn't grasp any concept that Josephine orchestrates all the upcoming events. At the party, after a fire dance, Josephine steps forward and suggests they have their own act. She beckons Timothy, who grabs a fiery iron and burns her shoulder, which she stoically endures. In the midst of the night later, Josephine wakes up with a burning pain in her shoulder, seeking a proper chance. She flees from the sleeping Timothy and follows a mountain path, hiding from a wild boar. She keeps running until reaching a house and banging the door for help. The door opens, and she encounters two men, confusingly looking at her. She grabs the chance and explains to them that a pervert abducted her but manages to escape. Deep down inside, she hopes her reveals to the men will be passed to her father. However, she suddenly faints from exhaustion. On the other hand, when Timothy wakes up but only finds his thrall woman has disappeared, he races after her and finds her lying in the house. He then breaks the window prompting them to leave there. Shortly after, 
Josephine and Timothy playfully tease each other at a lake, leading to an intense encounter. As they resume their journey, the sorcerer claims he can see inside people's minds but finds nothing in Josephine's. Then, the young woman walks to the edge of a cliff, seemingly unfazed by the possibility of death. She challenges the self-proclaimed son of God, urging him to use his powers to save her when she falls. Alarmed by her madness, Timothy pulls Josephine back, but she laughs at him. Upset, the vagrant walks away and hides in the woods, shedding tears. To this moment, Josephine has successfully made Timothy think that she is in love with him, and the man's heart becomes soft. As night falls, Josephine expresses her concerns for Timothy's wounded hand and suggests he have it checked, but the latter refuses. The following day, they enter a forge where the old blacksmith greets Timothy knowingly. Josephine asks if the blacksmith was the one who bestowed Timothy with his powers, but the old man doesn't respond. Timothy proudly introduces Josephine as his lover. All the traps Josephine set up for Timothy have caught him off guard. He starts trusting the woman and believes she will never make any moves again, but just stays with him. A few days later, Josephine tends to Timothy's weakened and infected hand, leading him to an abandoned building. She quickly leaves to summon an apothecary from the village, recognizing the worsening infection. The apothecary properly bandages Timothy's wound and advises them to go to the hospital. Shortly after, the police arrive at their hiding place. Alerted by the apothecary, they recognize Josephine and arrest Timothy for abduction and imprisonment. Betrayed, Timothy screams while Josephine, who followed him, watches as he is taken away. Josephine's escaping journey from this perverted man finally comes to an end. She reunites with her father, who embraces her in relief. Timothy is finally caught, and in the detention hall, Captain Langlois interrogates Timothy about his journey with Josephine. Assuming that Timothy had threatened Josephine rather than relying on his charms, Captain Langlois finds amusement in the vagrant's defense. Timothy asserts that when he met Josephine, she was lonely and miserable, willingly choosing to follow him. He denies accusations of enchantment and coercion. However, Captain Langlois presents a statement from a neighboring family who witnessed Timothy's tricks and saw Josephine obeying him like a dog, proudly. Timothy admits that his performances were meant to entertain the family and confesses to enchanting many others before Josephine. The officer reminds Timothy of the seriousness of his crimes. Captain Langlois then introduces himself as an investigator to Josephine and interrogates her about the simple-minded vagrant. Josephine maintains that she was afraid of her captor, who bewitched her with his magic tricks. The officer shows her Timothy's ring, but she claims not to recognize it. Doubting her statements, Captain Langlois probes further about her alleged enchantment, but her explanations are vague and unclear. The officer emphasizes the importance of justice and reveals that Timothy may walk away free if Josephine testifies against his charge. In the end, Josephine affirms that she was abducted, enchanted, and violated many times by Timothy to support her claim. She even shows them the scar on her shoulder, which serves as evidence of her retaliation. However, no one ever knows that Josephine inflicted the scar mark under Timothy's assistance, which can be used as evidence to sue Timothy one day. Her plan simply works, making the officer believe in her testimony. Shortly after the trial date arrives, Josephine bravely speaks before the court, describing in detail her abduction and the torments she endured. However, she flashes a small smile at Timothy as she returns to her seat. Later at night, from Timothy's cell, he watches Josephine with awe as she stands on her windowsill, kissing her shoulder wound. As a plot twist, the girl seems to have some magic power over him. It results in Timothy confessing to the non-consensual and immoral acts he committed against Josephine during the second trial. Contrary to his earlier claims to the officer, Timothy asserts that the deceitful Josephine is innocent of her misfortunes. The jury finally declares Timothy guilty, sentencing him to 12 years in prison. As you think the whole dramatic story is drawing to an end. However, one day at lunch, Josephine feels sick at the sight of the dish in front of her. She is pregnant with Timothy's baby. Months pass, and she carries the baby with her and reveals it to the officer, hoping to see Timothy for one last time before she leaves for Paris. The officer agrees to her request and arranges the last meeting. In the cell, Josephine reveals to Timothy that the baby she carries is his son, whom she named after him. Timothy is overjoyed but looks absent-minded as Josephine's hypnosis of him will haunt him for the rest of his life in prison. If you like my channel or enjoy watching me dance, please leave a comment in the comment section saying dance, Adam.